Hello everyone, welcome back. If you remember, we were discussing about the grading of bitumen and here we have discussed about various grading system such as penetration grade, viscosity grade and in the last presentation, we were discussing about the super pave grading system. We discussed that what are the equipments that are required to complete the super pave grading system and how the rheological properties are used to differentiate between different bitumen specimens. We also discussed that in the super pave grading system, one of the very important point is that here uh, the test temperature does not remain constant. So, the parameter which we are testing or which is used as a performance indicator that remains constant and the temperature at which this parameter is satisfied or is reached is noted down and is used to grade the bitumen. Here the bitumen is graded using two numbers, the first number indicates the average 7 day maximum pavement temperature whereas the second number it indicates the lowest pavement temperature of the location for where we are going to use that particular bitumen. We discussed that these parameters to uh, quantify the performance indicators that is or performance parameters such as uh, rutting, fatigue and low temperature cracking are quantified using uh, G star by sin delta. So, G star by sin delta if you remember is measured using a dynamic shear and we do this measurement in the unaged and short term aged condition of the bitumen sample. Then the fatigue characteristic is that is G star dot sin delta. This is measured at the average pavement temperature which if you remember is the maximum temperature plus the minimum temperature divided by 2 plus 4 degrees Celsius. And the low temperature susceptibility is quantified using tests such as bending beam rheometer where we use the parameter uh, creep stiffness and the slope creeps or the uh, slope of the stiffness uh, versus time graph at 60 seconds and using uh, direct tension tester. So, this is used specifically for very stiff binders which also have ductile properties for example, a polymer modified binder and we here use uh, the train uh, that should be greater than the failure strain that should be greater than 1 percent whereas the creep stiffness should be less than 300 ampa and the m value uh, should be greater than 0 0.3 at 60 seconds. Uh, coming back to the fatigue parameter, the limiting value is 5000 kappa, whereas for G star uh, by sin delta in the unaged condition, the limiting value is 1 kappa, it should be greater than 1 kappa or 2.2 kappa if it is a short term aged sample. So, having uh, done this revision, let us now see that how the grading actually looks like and how different grades can be assessed using this system. So, the code is H2MP1 which is now converted to H2M320 and this is just a partial uh, image from the grading uh, chart. Here I have shown only PG52 and PG58, likewise there are various other grades uh, and we will discuss about those grades in the next slide. In this slide just we will try to have a look upon how to read this chart for grading. So, let us say that we are interested to see PG52. So, 52 here indicates the uh, 7 day average maximum temperature of the pavement. All right. With this high temperature grading, we have several options for low temperature grading. So, we can have PG minus 10, PG minus 16, minus 22, minus 28, minus 34, minus 40. All right. So, we can have a bitumen which can be graded as PG 52 minus 10, where minus 10 indicates the lowest pavement temperature of the particular location of a particular area. Similarly, PG52-22 uh, indicates that the binder, this binder will be suitable for a location where the average 7 day maximum temperature is less than equal to 52 degree Celsius and the minimum pavement temperature is minus 22 degree Celsius or higher. So, uh, which you can see here, 
and in the first two rows. Now, let us see what other rows indicate. So, you see there are some conditions on original binder which means binder in the unaged condition. So, the first criteria in the super pave grading system is that the minimum flash point. So, this is for safety same for all the grades the minimum flash point should be 230 degrees Celsius and we have already learned about the flash point test. The viscosity using rotational viscometer at 135 degrees Celsius should be maximum 3 Pascal seconds. So, this criteria also we have discussed previously which is for pumping of the binder in the mixing plant. Now, we come to the performance indicator. The first performance indicator is G star by sin delta and the minimum value is 1 kappa and for this particular grade that is PG 52, it should satisfy at 52 degrees Celsius or of course, at lower temperatures it will satisfy or you can say that 52 degrees Celsius is the fail temperature beyond which the value of G star by sin delta will be higher than 1 kilo Pascals. So, therefore, this particular bitumen will be graded as PG 52. Similarly, at 52 degrees Celsius in the RTFO jet condition, the value of G star by sin delta should be at least 2.2 kappa which you can see here and here the mass loss maximum mass loss allowed after short term aging is 1 percent. All right. So, we are done with unaged binder and short term aged binder. Now, on the long term aged binder which we get after the pressure aging vessel test, uh, the value of G star uh, dot sign delta is of interest G star dot sign delta and it is maximum 5000 kappa you can see and this is the average temperature. Now, let us have a look. Uh, since we discussed that the average temperature is the average plus 4 degrees Celsius. So, here why it is 25? It is 25 because we are looking at a binder with PG grade PG 52 minus 10 all right. So, according to our discussion it should be 52 minus 10 divided by 2 plus 4 degrees Celsius. So, you can see this is 42 divided by 2 plus 4 degrees Celsius, this is 21 plus 4 which is 25 degrees Celsius. So, therefore, this is 25 degrees Celsius. So, if you do calculation similarly for all the other grades, you will be able to get the same value as indicated in this particular chart. Okay. Uh, then talking about the low temperature property, again we discussed that during the super pave grading system what they did? they increased uh, the test temperature by 10 degree Celsius, so that they can get the desired value after 2 hours in 60 seconds. So, the PG grading is minus 10, but we are doing the test at 10 degree Celsius higher temperature, which means it will be 0 degree Celsius in this case. So, at 0 degree Celsius, we have to ensure that the creep stiffness is less than 300 ampa and the value of N is greater than equal to 0 0.3. Similarly, if we are using a direct tension test for highly stiff binders, uh, in that case the failure strain at least should be 1 percent at that particular temperature. Okay. So, I hope that this the reading of this chart is clear that how these different grades looks like. Now, here I have marked that which rows corresponds to different performance criteria. So, this row which you can see is marked in blue is to control rutting that is G star by sin delta. This is for fatigue G star dot sin delta and finally, we have a row to control thermal cracking or low temperature cracking based on the BBR and DTT test parameters. So, some of the um, other salient features to discuss here uh, about the PG grading system. So, these are the different grades which you can see on the table on the uh, left hand side we have the high temperature grades and the corresponding low temperature grades on the right hand side. So, you see here in, in all these grading systems PG 76 and 72 they are on the higher side which typically you would not expect at all the locations is not it. So, PG 76 and 82 are actually used for slow transient and stationary vehicular loads. So, we have to remember that the super pave grading system is based uh, on tests done in dynamic shear u meter at 10 radians per second, which we discussed corresponds to a speed of around 80 to 90 kmph of the traffic. But it may happen that at some locations, for example, near toll plazas, 
we have stationary traffic near traffic signals we can have stationary traffic. So, sometimes we can have stationary and very slow moving traffic if the volume of traffic is very high in some location. So, in those cases because more is the loading time softer the bitumen will behave is not it because higher is the st uh, speed stiffer the bitumen will behave. So, the 80 to 90 km pH actually indicates a particular stiffness of the binder at that particular frequency. But if you are talking about a lower frequency which means more loading time then the same binder is subjected to a frequency where it will behave in a different manner it will have more viscous response in comparison to the frequency of 10 radians per second. So, therefore, when the speed of the vehicle is uh, less in order to have more resistance towards uh, rutting um, failure uh, PG 76 and 82 can be used. Another important point to discuss here is that if the difference between high and low PG temperature is more than 90 degree Celsius in that case we have to use PMBs. All right. So, suppose uh, if you are talking about 58 and minus 40 let us say. So, 58 minus minus 40 um, it is 98 which is more than 90 degree Celsius. So, if this is our desired grading which we want which means we have a location where the temperature difference the, ex the temperature difference between extreme high and extreme low is very wide in that case it is preferable to go with polymer modified binders which have lower temperature susceptibility in comparison to the unmodified binders. Another point to note here is that when we are talking about these temperatures we say 46 degree Celsius we say minus 34 degree Celsius. So, you have to remember that in the PG grading system the high pavement temperature or the high PG temperature it corresponds to the pavement temperature taken at a depth of 20 mm. So, uh, if you remember that we discussed that when the SHRP was developing this they had a storehouse of a uh, of from the weather stations of lot of uh, temperature data and then they did study how to correlate the air temperature data with the pavement temperature data and for developing the high temperature specifications they use the pavement temperature at a depth of 20 mm. On the other hand for low temperature while developing the code initially at the, the, the low temperature for example, let us say minus 46 degree Celsius. So, this corresponds to the surface temperature of the pavement lowest surface temperature of the pavement and we will discuss that this minus 46 degree Celsius was taken as the air temperature. So, towards the low temperature grade the low temperature value is equal to the air temperature or the lowest air temperature and here the lowest air temperature is taken equal to the lowest pavement temperature whereas on the high temperature side based on the air temperature they have developed a correlation of the pavement temperature. So, they have taken that the pavement temperature is higher than the air temperature here all right. Another important point to note here is that that if you see closely see this the specification you will see that the values are gapped at 6 degree Celsius. So, there can be a question that why they specifically selected grades at 6 degree Celsius why not say there is a grade like PG 47 or PG 48 or PG 50. So, why there is a gap of 6 degree Celsius because they found that it is not really very uh, practical or convenient to grade the bitumen at every 1 degree Celsius uh, because there may be significant overlapping between the binders and they found that if there is a reduction in temperature by 6 degree Celsius uh, the viscosity of the binder is approximately 2 times. So, it is very easy to differentiate between one grade to the different grade. So, therefore, a 6 degree gap was chosen to develop this specification. So, the super pave grading system also gives us an opportunity to select the binder based on the target reliability. Okay. So, here you can see that uh, this shows the distribution because temperature of course, at a location cannot be constant even, even if we see the low temperature the daily variation of the lowest temperature there will be a variation there will be a distribution. So, 
here uh, we have two extremes for a any for a particular location in US. So, here it shows that this brown dumbbell curve or normal distribution this indicates the pavement temperature which you see is more than the. So, this is the fluctuation of air temperature variation in the air temperature and there are models available one of the model is written here which you can see that we can find the uh, asphalt pavement temperature based on the latitude uh, values and the value of the average 7 day maximum air temperature. So, if you have the latitude of the location and the average 7 day maximum air temperature you can calculate the uh, asphalt pavement temperature. Of course, uh, this is a location specific model. So, there can be various models in various countries even in India we can develop one such model considering various locations in the country uh, and similarly on, on this shows the uh, a correlation between the air temperature and the pavement temperature when we are trying to calculate the low temperature. So, uh, this is just two models taken from literature uh, which shows that uh, what will be the pavement temperature if we have the minimum air temperature and if we have the average 7 day maximum air temperature. So, this is the lowest temperature and this is the uh, high pavement temperature. All right. So, anyways, so uh, therefore, you see here on the right hand side we have two normal distribution one is for air which is shown here and based on the correlation the brown one or the brown uh, normal distribution is uh, the variation of the temperature of the pavement. And on the left hand side we have only one curve because as I said pavement temperature was taken equal to the air temperature. So, whatever is the variation in air temperature will also be taken as the variation of pavement temperature. So, here see how do you define reliability for uh, in the grading system. So, reliability it is the uh, percent probability in a single year that the actual temperature uh, for example, one day low or seven day average high will not exceed the corresponding design temperature. So, this is the reliability which means that uh, if you take 56 which is the mean which means there is a 50 percent chance that in one year this pavement temperature will be exceeded all right. And if you take let us say the 98 percent uh, value based on the standard deviation obviously. So, uh, here in, in this graph which is shown um, the standard deviation of the uh, 7 day high pavement temperature is 2 degrees Celsius and on the low pavement temperature standard deviation is 4 degrees Celsius. So, uh, let us say you take 60 degrees Celsius which here is the 98 percent uh, percentile value. So, if you take 60 as your design which means there is only 2 percent chance that in one year uh, the pavement temperature or the 7 day average maximum temperature will exceed 60 degrees Celsius which means you can get a higher reliability by selecting 60 degree Celsius as your design temperature. Similarly, on the on this side if you see on the uh, left side minus 23 is again at the 50 percent reliability. If you want to go to 98 percent reliability you have to choose minus 31 which means your design grade for this location should be PG 60 minus 31 in order to get 98 percent reliability at 50 percent reliability is PG 56 minus 23 all right. But again you have to remember here that it is possible that there is no grade as PG 56. So, of course, let us say there is a grade like PG 58 which means by default you will be on the right hand side of the curve and though you are doing it for the mean, but you are selecting a grade which is PG 58. So, this will increase your reliability level automatically. All right. So, uh, in, in this way uh, using, using this chart we can uh, select any reliability we want to and we can uh, choose the appropriate binder. Uh, this chart again shows uh, the same example where you see uh, they have taken PG 58 minus 28. Why? Because there is nothing called PG 56 minus 23. Now, here if you would have chosen PG 56 minus 23 it would have given the design reliability of 50 percent as we discussed. Now, since we have a grade PG minus 28 and not a grade which is PG minus 23, I mean the nearest grade to this value is PG 58 minus 28. So, 
if we do the actual calculation we will find that this is actually 85 percent on uh, at the 85 percent reliability level. Similarly, uh, the 98 percent the minimum 98 percent reliability is if I want to choose 68 and minus 31, but since there is no grade as PG 60, so I am choosing PG 64 minus 34. So, the minimum reliability will be 98 percent, but the actual reliability will be very close to 100 percent alright. So, uh, this is uh, how uh, we can choose the appropriate binder based on the reliability consideration. Uh, one additional point here is that the PG grading system also suggests to do grade bumping. What is grade bumping? That you go one grade higher. Now, now this was done because of the same reason we discussed in the previous slide that the system was developed corresponding to a speed of 80 to 90 kmph. But during hot weather um, when we have a stationary traffic very high volume or heavy traffic that will cause higher development of permanent uh, deformation or, or you can say susceptibility to permanent deformation will be higher alright. So, in order to uh, accommodate that condition. Uh, what super pave grading system suggest that if the traffic is slow transient you go, go for one grade bumping. For example, if the design grade is PG 58 corresponding to a speed of 80 to 90 kmph you choose a PG of 64. Similarly, if the traffic is stationary it is almost in a stop condition instead of PG 64 you choose PG 70. Of course, the low temperature uh, choice is not affected by this condition because at, low, at lower temperature it is not very significant if you remember that at lower temperature the bitumen, uh, bitumen achieves an asymptotic value of uh, the stiffness. So, the stiffness the, the change in stiffness is not time dependent at low temperature conditions, but at high temperature since it is more time dependent we have to do grade bumping on the higher side. All right. So, this is how grade bumping is done. Uh, well, uh, this is all about the PG grading system. Now, this chart which has been taken from an ASTM code, uh, I just wanted to place it here to discuss few advanced uh, specifications which have been developed after the super pave grading system. So, if you remember we have uh, discussed about the uh, multiple stress creep and recovery test. So, what was found by various researchers after this PG system developed there were a lot of studies done with different binders, different mixes to see whether uh, these uh, parameters like G star by sin delta or G star dot sin delta is really useful in quantifying the uh, rutting and fatigue. Uh, properties of the asphalt mixtures or the hot mix asphalt. So, many studies indicated that when we have bitumen modified bitumen such as polymer modified bitumen, the correlation between the occurrence of rut depth and G star by sin delta is not very good which means there is a poor correlation. Uh, one of the reason is because these polymer modified binders they have very high delayed elastic response which is not captured by the stiffness parameter which is G star by sin delta. And therefore, uh, they developed the multiple stress creep and recovery test to, to, to bring in the effect of non-linear viscoelastic response of the binders. So, based on the multiple stress creep and recovery uh, they developed PG plus specification which is being used and applied specially for polymer modified binders and there are certain criterias under that which has to be met. So, this is just a snapshot of that particular criteria. The chart is almost similar to what we saw uh, for, uh, for the uh, super pave grading system in the previous slides with few changes and differences. For example, here the rutting is quantified using the non-recoverable creep compliance JNR and not G star by sin delta in the short term aged condition. In the unaged condition they still use G star by sin delta as the critical parameter. Here 
based on GNR. So, GNR is the unrecoverable creep compliance which you get from MSCR test uh, which is usually done at 2 stress level 0 0.1 kPa and 3.2 kPa and then we, uh, we, we carry out 10 cycles for 0.1 kPa, uh, 10 cycles for 3.2 kPa and we do a set of calculations to arrive at the value of GNR which is basically uh, uh, taken. And in this specification, they take basically GNR with respect to 3.2 kPa, not 0 0.1 kPa. So, 0 0.1 kPa is basically used to calculate a parameter which is called as GNR difference, which is a stress susceptibility parameter under the MSCR test. All right. So, here using the value of GNR and GNR difference, they have segregated uh, the same grade for different levels of traffic. So, we have a traffic which is standard, it is designated as S grade, we have a traffic which is heavy, they have designated as H grade, we have a traffic which is very heavy, they have designated it as V grade and extremely uh, heavy traffic is indicated or is denoted as E grade. So, uh, you can have a binder whose grading can be for example, PG 46 minus 34 S or H or V or E. So, the same grade can have four different grades based on the anticipated traffic level. All right. So, of course, if you see in this particular slide, it, it may not appear to be readable. So, I have just taken here an example of PG 46 and 52. Uh, I have just you know magnified the image and here I hope you will be able to see. So, uh, you see we have PG 46 minus 34 minus 40 minus 46 let us say under 52 you have more number of low temperature grades. So, I hope we understand uh, what does these mean the same which we saw in the previous chart. Here also the safety indicator is same the flash point should be minimum 230 degree Celsius. The value of viscosity remains same at 135 degree Celsius maximum 3 Pascal seconds in the unaged condition. So, this green chart is for the criteria required in unaged condition. In the unaged condition, we have the same criteria G star dot sin delta should be at least 1 kPa at the grading temperature that is 46 degree Celsius. This uh, the, the second color is for short term aged condition. So, after doing the RTFO aging, you will test the binder if it is a PG 46 grade. So, at 46 degree Celsius, if the traffic is under the S category or the standard category, then the value of GNR at 3.2 kPa should be maximum 4.5 kPa inverse. All right. And GNR difference should be maximum 75 percent. So, this is the criteria for S grade. For the same uh, PG 46, when we do the test at 46 degree Celsius, but we are looking for a traffic which falls under H category, then the value of JNR at 3.2 kPa should be maximum 2 kilo Pascal inverse. Uh, if we are looking at a very heavy traffic, then the maximum value of JNR permissible is 1 kPa inverse and for extremely heavy it is 0.5 kPa inverse. Now, <coughs> the value of GNR difference remains same in all the criteria for GNR difference remains same in all the cases that is maximum 75 percent up to the V traffic level. At the extremely heavy traffic level there is no criteria for GNR difference. Now, let us see the requirement at low temperature I mean after the PAV aging condition long term. So, under long term aging condition one criteria is for fatigue. Now, here in contrast to the previous value of 5000 kPa, they have increased the value as 6000 kPa. All right. 6000 kPa for, for S category um, and similarly for H, V and E category. Now, in ASHTO uh, this is this is taken from the ASTM specification. In the ASHTO specification, for the S grade, they still have 5000 kPa and only for the H, V and E grade, they have 6000 kPa as the requirement. The uh, temperature calculation remains same as we have seen previously. 
uh, the there is no change in the creep stiffness requirement it remains same uh, just like as the usual PG specification. This is clear how PG specification is used and what additional criteria are uh, taken or are used to grade uh, under the PG plus specification. Uh, just like I did for the physical testing, this table shows different ASTM, we do not have any specific IES code as of now because in India uh, we still follow viscosity grading system uh, and the use of rheometer is limited uh, for few specifications. So, therefore, we mostly have ASTM and ASTO codes and these uh, specifications can be looked for example, for basic rheological properties we have ASTM D7175 and ASTO T315. For performance grading again we have an ASTM code and again M320 of uh, the ASTO specification. Uh, similarly, for PG specification based on MSCR or PG plus specification, uh, this is the one whose uh, which we were looking now in the previous slide and again we have ASTO M332 uh, which is for PG specification or PG grading based on MSCR test. Uh, additionally, we have there is a popular test which is evolving slowly and about which we have discussed previously that is linear amplitude sweep test. Well, we do not have any specification for grading the binder based on linear amplitude sweep test, but this is being popularly used as a replacement of G star dot sign delta to quantify the fatigue resistance of the binder. Uh, with this, uh, let us end here and uh, we have now completed our discussion on PG grading system. Uh, so, in the next class, we will start discussing about modified binders, emulsion and cutback bitumen and after completing these topics, we will complete module 3. Thank you.